<laughs> the, the no man's land between Afghanistan and Pakistan. <laughs> they're everywhere. And I'm sure they're, I, I hate to say this, but they're probably cells here in the United States. So yes, it's a worldwide phenomenon. That's and I don't think that you know killing off some of the top leadership, not even all of the top leadership, but some of the top leadership doesn't mean that we've solved the al Qaeda problem. No, not solved, but do you feel that they've weakened? No. Well, you know, that's certainly the viewpoint of the U.S. government. Leon Panetta has said that, that we've significantly weakened the Al-Qaeda structure. But the point is, the uh, Al-Qaeda is a learning organization. You know, they now have their own magazine, if you can believe that. Mm -hmm. um, they actually have a magazine. What? Yes, they use it as a recruitment tool. So they're a learning organization. <coughs> they, they change, they move around, they, they change their targets, they change their tactics. You know, they change what it is they're after. They're a learning organization, and so uh, it's hard to say that we're we're through with them. Mm -hmm. Ever since um, they killed the leader, you know, the man, you think they lost? Um, is that true? Mm -hmm. I mean, some people don't believe it. But. Well, let me ask you a question. When the man was killed in May, there were these spontaneous demonstrations in front of the White House because he was killed and we got the news. Did anyone go in front of the White House? And no. Uh, no. No, I didn't know. Did, you know anyone who did go? No. no. Okay. <laughs> Well, you know, what do you think caused that sense of elation, that sense of celebration? We've we been searching for him for so long. For that man was right under our nose. Can I ask you a question? <laughs> hey, you know, do you fear, do you fear September 11th coming up? Do I fear it? Yeah. Well, you know, we're on high alert, especially in New York City where the uh, commemorations are going to be Sunday. We do fear it, although I actually heard when I was, I was coming over here this morning um, on NPR that it's possible that terrorists may wait a month or two when there's less police protection, there's yeah. less vigilance. Yeah. So I think it's important for all of you as, as you know, part of our society, you know, citizens, young students, to be vigilant, to, to <coughs> open your eyes, you know, to look at what <laughs> to doesn't report any suspicious activities. Right. Right. right, because it may not be this Sunday that something happens. It could be any day. And that's how really the terrorists have succeeded in, in their, you know, in their goal, because now we're afraid all the time, so everywhere. Yeah. And that was essentially their goal, you know, that we would, um, just as ordinary people, ordinary citizens, be afraid all the time. Like, like yesterday, I was stuck on 395, okay, because of the flood, okay, coming from school, going to work. There was millions of people on that road, okay, and something just, you know, was going in my head about if they really wanted to kill millions and millions of people, it would, you know, now would be, uh, and I'm like, well, do I be one of them? Right now, it's, it's, you know, cause the closer I get to September 11th, the more I think about little stuff like that. Well, you know, uh, yeah, that, that's kind of interesting because it makes us feel vulnerable all the time, everywhere we go. I mean, you don't feel safe in uh, 395, on 495, on Route 66, in your house in an airport, overseas. Yeah, you just, you've had a sense of a heightened aware of vulnerability that anything could happen at any time. Um, mm -hmm. You know, a bomb could go off in a suitcase, a bomb could go off, you know, in a printer cartridge. You just don't know. And that, I think, is, is how the terrorists have actually succeeded in this past decade in terms of instilling terror in all of us, you know, sort of worldwide. Ordinary people who normally would not be targeted. We're not political folks, we're not in the military, we're not in the line of fire. We're not first responders, we're not policemen. But on the other hand, we're just ordinary folks doing our ordinary daily tasks, but we still feel vulnerable. And that's, that's sort of how terrorism has succeeded. Well, let's think about ways to defeat terrorism, because I think that we're all engaged in the same basic goal. You know, we, we, I'm hoping, I speak for us all, but we're saying we don't agree with terrorists. We don't agree with their methods. We don't agree with their ideology. We don't agree with um, what it is they're trying to accomplish. So looking at that, you know, we, we discuss a, a wide <coughs> range of topics and actors within sort of the terrorist scheme. What I want to move to, shift to very, very quickly, is a discussion of how to sort of, you know, untangle all of these threads, because there's a lot out there to sort of absorb in its heart. Now, the book that I wrote, um, it's a very long title, bear with me, A Fearful Symmetry, A New Soldier in an Age of Asymmetric Conflict, talks about three kinds of Islamic-based fundamentalist terrorism. The first kind is the people who are interested in, I call them separatists, they're interested in establishing their own nation state. Somebody mentioned Palestine, was it you, sir? Yes. Right. <clears throat> now why do I say the Palestinians are separatists interested in forming their own state and they're terrorists because Hamas, for example, does use terrorist means, but they're, they're different from Al-Qaeda. Why, why would I make that distinction? Any idea? Um, 
Well, a lot of different uh, terrorist groups, even though they associate with, uh, say, Al Qaeda or something like the Al Shabaab and stuff like that, they have their own goals, but they co co collaborate with each other so that they um, they they can complete, uh, I guess, their goals. So. Well, what if, what if us think that the Palestinians are interested in forming their own state? Why why would they want that? Because they, then they can have their own money and they, they can run, run things their own way instead of all these people, all these different countries always coming in and bullying them around, okay. pushing them around. Okay. So do people think that's legitimate or? I mean, it's, it's legitimate, but it's, it's there are other ways. Yeah, there are other ways. There are other ways to, de to deal with being bullied or being taken over, other than you know just blowing people up and going and going through things like that, shooting people on the street. Well, if you could talk to the Palestinian Authority, um, President Hillel, what would you tell him? Because of don't bomb things, well, he's not actually involved in that, but if you could go to the Palestinian Authority and say, do things differently, what would you tell them to do? I mean, there, there are other ways, you know, that's, you, with, with power, you know, you have to put together a government in order to, to one, one to exist. You can't just, you know, have different outbursts and different actions and then just expect, okay, well, they'll change. If, if we go in and blow people up and we'll do things like that, you have to have, have different ways to work inside of the government. <coughs> uh, to, to add to that, I would uh, give them, uh, I guess, use examples of uh, new countries that have formed that have formed uh, recently, like uh, South Sudan, mm -hmm. stuff like that. So. Okay. All right. So, so use peaceful means to form uh, new nation states, and actually, it's encouraging that they want a nation state, you know, a country of their own. And this applies to uh, the Palestinian Western Sahara, the Al Nusaya group in the Philippines. There are other sort of Islamic-based um, terrorist groups uh, motivated by terrorist means that want their own nation state. And that's actually sort of encouraging in a way because it makes dialogue possible, because we know what their end goal is. Now, the second group that I, that I talk about in my book is, are the jihadists. And that's the typical Al Qaeda and its related uh, networks. So we've spent a lot of time talking about them. And in terms of the jihadist agenda, that's sort of like basic anarchy. They want, you know, they want to destroy. I mean, their 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 first and primary goal is to destroy not just people, individuals, but institutions and countries. Do they do? You, does anyone have any idea of what sort of an Al Qaeda group or affiliated group would want beyond just destruction? What else are they looking for? Or what else are they looking for? Money and power. Money and power. Money and power. That's it? One belief. One belief. Why is it important for jihadists to have everyone believe what they believe? They can tell you what they believe. Power. Okay. Well, what, I mean, uh, why do you have to believe what I believe? Or why do I have to believe what you believe? Why does it have to be the same? Can it be different? Yeah. That's what they don't want. What, what do they want? No, we can't be different because if it's different, you're gonna get, you're gonna be dead. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you're gonna feel the same. It's a form of control. If everybody, if everybody believes what I say, you know, it's gonna be easier to control. Them. So, oh, easy to control them. Yeah. So if everybody believes the same thing, then you can control them and get them to do what you want them to do. So do people agree with that? Is, is mind control having one belief system for everybody in the world? Is that, is that a good thing? Or no. Everybody no. wants to be in charge. No. Just wants to be in charge. They want to be in charge. I don't, I don't see how we can come together and, you know, be as one. I don't, I don't think that's possible. It'll never happen. I don't think so. Okay. So it's not even possible. So no. It's not everybody realistic. wants their own type of control. I don't, I don't think so. Um, all right. Now the third group, that I want to talk about, uh, that's not really addressed in the book, but I want to talk about it today, 